Hey, I'm gonna talk about one of the most disappointing movies of my life. And you know what? It's from a very good, great director. It has the most beautiful special effects I've seen, great 3D. But it was a pretty shitty movie. I mean, at first when I saw it, um, I thought it was just an okay movie. I guess I was uh, just telling people to go watch it because of the visuals. But after watching it for the third time in my life, I gotta admit, it is terrible. It really is. It's the one of the most disappointing, worst, big budgeted piece of shit I have ever seen in my life. And that is Prometheus. I mean, yeah, I know I know the critics have seventy five percent that liked it. But honestly, I don't know what they're seeing. Probably they like the ideas better than I do. I I mean, from the trailer, it looked like it was uh, going to be a great tribute to Alien, because really Scott created Alien, but it was... Oh, God. Uh... If uh, I end up uh, laughing at a movie I'm not supposed to laugh at, that's terrible. <laughs> That's all I can say about my experience in the theater because there were a bunch of stupid shit uh, that happened. But um, story-wise, um, it really did suck. Um, it had characters I did not like at all. Well, there were a couple I did like, mostly because they are smarter than everyone else. Uh, first off, uh, in Prometheus, um, it's a story about this crew. And I believe uh, it said there's only 17 crew members in the Prometheus. And they were being sent out to investigate um, because uh, the two main scientists, they believe that aliens created the humans and they left uh, drawings in caves and uh, almost everyone has the same uh, cave drawing or hieroglyph or blah blah blah. So at first it seemed interesting. But then uh, when it shows Prometheus, it says it only has 17 crew members. And the entire time you're like, why you only send that much? They said that, oh, it's for exploration, it's for science. But, um, you know, you're going to an alien planet you've never been before and you uh, haven't uh, seen any aliens and you're going to make contact with them. You don't think to bring, like, a backup plan, you know, more military another ship just in case if something happens to the uh, Prometheus anything no I don't know it felt rushed or it needed another rewrite I don't know what the hell really Scott was thinking <laughs> he seemed smarter than that but no it, it starts getting stupider and dumber and oh my god it's pathetic um, the main uh, the uh, heroine well heroine um, she's Elizabeth uh, Shaw, I believe, that's her last name. I don't know. I don't care. She sucked. Uh, she was from the uh, original Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, and honestly, I hated her in this. <laughs> um, I, I would say most of the acting is terrible, <laughs> because they don't seem like believable characters. I mean, these are supposed to be all smart people, all scientists. You have geologists, biologists, uh, doctors, surgeons, but... They make the stupidest mistakes, and they're like college students from the 1980s horror films. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, so, um, you know one thing that pissed me off? Um, and, uh, yeah. Basically, uh, she and her boyfriend or husband, I don't know, he was a dick. I, I hated him. And um, so they were uh, gonna tell uh, the rest of the crew about what their uh, their mission is. That uh, Wayland, who is played by Guy Pierce, and you know what? There was a very awesome commercial, um, the very awesome ad uh, for uh, the movie. Um, it's called TED Talks, and it had Guy Pierce as Wayland, and he was awesome. I liked his speech. Problem is, is that in this one he's lo looks uh, 150 years old. And it's all CGI, or if it is not CGI, that is terrible makeup. It really is. Uh, you, guy appears acting like an old man. No, no, it it sucked. Why couldn't they use a different, realistic old man? You don't need Guy Pierce, because unless uh, if people did not see that advertisement, why? Uh, 
they're gonna ask why Guy Pierce is in this. <laughs> so um, he's like, oh, these two are the leaders, and uh, this is uh, what their mission is, and uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna see some aliens uh, because they created us. And one, the geologist, the one with the mohawk, um, geologist with the mohawk, I don't know, he's Irish also, I think, I don't, it's all weird. And uh, he's like, well, do you have any proof that, uh, you know, these aliens created us? And Elizabeth said the most bullshit uh, answer. She says that, no, we don't, but I choose to believe it. You know, like a regular scientist, right? I'm, she has no freaking proof. But she believes it. That's all that's important. <laughs> it's so stupid. I hate it. I hate it. Um, but it gets more stupid. You know, every time somebody talks, it's just making the movie worse and worse and worse. Um, so they landed on the planet, and uh, boyfriend slash husband slash douchebag, um, he's like, you know what? We landed. Let's go. And the captain's, oh, Idris Elba, he's one of the best parts about this movie, and he's the captain. And uh, he's like, wait, 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 you'll know what's out there, we just landed, we should uh, survey the area. He's like, no, 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 I want to open my Christmas present early. The guy's a fucking dick. I mean, it's not like you have a huge deadline to do. I don't know about a time limit. You just landed on a planet you've never been to, and you don't know what's out there. So... Yeah, uh, they visited uh, this gigantic uh, cave-like thing, and, um, oh yeah, uh, you gotta remember this, because the geologist, he has these awesome-looking balls, <laughs> sorry, but yeah, they're balls uh, that uh, glow red and blue, I forgot what the lights were, but anyway, uh, he throws them up in the air, and they scan the entire area, creating a map, a virtual map that he has on his pad, Plus, it goes back to the Prometheus uh, captain, yeah, Idris Elba, so everyone can see you. Uh, and also, they uh, have tracking systems on each suit, so people know where each person is. Okay, that's very important. So, um, um, they uh, go investigate, and they found a bunch of uh, dead bodies, and the geologists and the biologists, they freak out, and they're like, nope, fuck this shit, we're leaving. So they left, and then uh, Michael Fassbender as uh, David, he's a cyborg. He was very good. I liked him. He's the only one with a purpose in this movie. That's why you like him. He is kind of the bad guy, but not really. He just, I guess he doesn't know any better, but no, no, no. Um, you know, you'll like him. It's Michael Fassbender. <laughs> So uh, he uh, opens up this alien thing that reveals a gigantic head with a bunch of jars that's uh, going to start oozing uh, black shit. And uh, I like that Elizabeth said, do not touch anything. And Michael Fassbender's like, okay. He's fondling everything. In. <laughs> I liked him. He was great. Because he had an agenda. He had purpose. There's a real reason why he's doing all this shit. So, um, it turns out there was going to be a storm coming in, uh, with a metal hail or something like that. I totally forgot what it was, but a storm's coming in. So, the crew have to evacuate and go back to the ship Prometheus. Otherwise, they'll be stuck, uh, in the cave. So, they came back, but before that, they found a decapitated head, alien uh, head. And uh, they brought that along with them. Shenanigans happen. Uh, Elizabeth got stuck, uh, caught in the storm, and uh, they spent like five to ten minutes trying to bring her in. It was annoying as hell. It was, she was dumb. Almost everyone is dumb, but no, no, no. The two dumbasses. Remember the geologist and biologist I uh, told you about? And remember I said that the geologist has that uh, pad where he could see uh, where to go. He has the map. They got lost in the cave. And not just that, like I said, they have the map of the cave with trackers back at Prometheus and the captain was looking at all this, but for some reason totally forgot or neglected the two guys still stuck in the cave. 
Because when Elizabeth and the rest of the crew came back, he's like, wait, we're missing two people. Where are they? You didn't look at the fucking map? Oh, God. <laughs> but you know what? Probably each of Salva think they're dumbasses and they should uh, be killed off. You know what? Go ahead, because they are two dumb dumbasses who should be killed off. So, um, the geologists and the biologists, they're, uh, walking around dumb and um, they went back to the dead bodies and they're like oh my god we gotta escape and there was a funny part where uh, they have to spend the night because of the storm so Idris Elba is like wait 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 uh, one of your trackers is uh, picking up a signal um, something's alive down there and the geologists and biologists, biologists were freaking out and they're like where is it where is it so we don't have to go there no no you should check it out no we don't want to check it out oh wait 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 Signal's gone. You know what? It's probably a glitch. <laughs> He's like, wait, wait, wait! Can you please tell us where it is so we don't go over there? And uh, it just was like, oh, no, 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 it's fine. You know what? Have a good night. Be safe down there. <laughs> he was great. Idris Alba was perfect. <laughs> he was a douchebag, but I liked him. <laughs> So, um, the biologists and the geologists, they're like, you know what, we're not going to find that uh, thing that the captain informed us, so we're going to stay away from it. Which you think, okay, it's the first smart move they did. But you know where they end up sleeping? The room with the giant head with the ooze uh, coming around. They think that's safe. Yeah, it's really safe. <laughs> I mean, ugh. So... Yeah, they get killed off, but in the dumbest way possible because um, the geologist was smoking marijuana inside his suit. I don't know. The entire theater laughed. I still laughed every time I watched it on DVD. <laughs> and the uh, biologist was like, yeah, you're getting high, man. But uh, then all of a sudden you see one of the aliens come up, and no, it's not the xenomorphs or anything, or the facehuggers. Well, he could be a facehugger, I don't know. The design is... It's like a giant snake, a cobra, but the head is shaped like a the penis. But its mouth is shaped like a vagina. <laughs> It's a half penis, half vagina snake thingy that's long as hell. A very interesting design. It made me laugh too. But you know what? The biologist, he was freaked out by seeing dead bodies, but not freaked out by seeing a half a penis, half vagina alien. He came closer to it. He's like, oh my god, isn't this the most beautiful thing you've seen? <gasps> I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Please die, please die. And you know what? He touched it, it grabbed around his arm, broke it, and then the geologist tried to cut it off, but we, we all know that these kind of aliens have acidic blood. Of course, they don't know that, it makes sense, but he tried cutting it, the acid sprayed onto his suit, and then uh, it melted. And then, uh, you know, the bio the biologist got fucked in the face. Seriously, it came up to his face and whack! And, yep, they're both dead. <laughs> but during that time, you know, more stupid shit happened. It's not that stupid shit, there's more stupid shit. Um, basically, back at Prometheus, there's two separate events. David is experimenting with this jar he found with the ooze. And then uh, he, uh, after he did a shit, he pulled it out and had a little tiny black speck. And he's like, "Oh, big things have small beginnings. I like them. <laughs> but um, when he pulled it out, then it cuts back to Elizabeth, who's studying the decapitated head. And, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention the beginning of Prometheus. The beginning of Prometheus, basically, there were these giant, ten-foot-tall, muscular humans that looked like uh, Kratos without the, you know, tattoo and the scars. With huge black eyes. Really. Their muscles are so inflated, they look like uh, if you put a needle to them, they'll explode. And, uh, you don't know who they are at the time, but... 
you realize that the the planet looks very similar to Earth. And so one guy was drinking the black ooze, and then he uh, basically disintegrates. And it was an honestly, it was a very cool effect. And at the time, you're uh, have questions and you're like, ooh, I wonder what this is gonna lead to. You know what? This is very interesting because uh, the title sequence, uh, he disintegrates entirely, but his DNA reforms again. So uh, at that point, you're like, probably that guy created all life. I guess that's what they're trying to go for on Earth. So you know what? It seemed interesting at the time. It turns out to be the most stupid things ever, but you know what? It's very interesting. So, um, it turns out that the, uh, the head uh, was the space jockey from uh, Alien. But uh, when they took it out, it turns out that it was actually a mask, and it's the same Kratos-like uh, uh, guy, the head. It, it was in it. So, but they realized there's these black specks on it, but you know what? Usually scientists would like to take their time and study and observe before making any rational decisions, but I don't know, I feel like they're on a deadline to die. So, um, the bitch, seriously, everyone's stupid. Um, she uh, pulled out like a needle, an electric needle, and she's like, you know what, uh, let's send some electric uh, probe uh, through it to see what happens. I'm like, why? So she did that, the Kratos head becomes alive and was in pain because, you know, the black ooze is uh, going to disintegrate him. He's like, ah, 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 ah. But Elizabeth doesn't try to stop it at the point. She's like, ooh, let's keep going, let's keep going. I'm like, are you serious? That thing's going to explode. It did explode. <laughs> These scientists are terrible. They had one awesome evidence of alien life, and they managed to blow it up. How do you screw this up? They're not scientists, they're dumbasses, they're uh, college students who got D minuses. Who just happened to get jobs, I don't know. They're, I don't know why every single scientist is a dumbass. But yeah, back to Michael Fassbender. He's talking with uh, Elizabeth's uh, boyfriend slash husband slash douchebag, and uh, he was dr he's drunk. I don't know how drunk. He doesn't act like it. He's bummed out because uh, he didn't see any uh, living aliens. What a dumbass! So he's playing around with the pool balls, and I don't know what exactly he's doing. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Michael Fassbender's like, you know, um, you just made the most important discovery of your life. Why are you upset? He's like, uh, the aliens are dead. I wish I get to meet one in person. I'm like, are you serious? Uh, so, uh, Michael Fassbender, um, there was an awesome line though, because, um, uh, the boyfriend said something about, uh, don't you ever want to meet your creator? And uh, Michael Fassbender's like, well, how do you feel if uh, he says you're inadequate or something? I don't know. I forgot the phrase. It was awesome, though. I like That's uh, one of the most important uh, phrases uh, in the movie that I liked. But, uh, yeah, uh, Michael Fassbender's like, here, drink this shot. Boy. And hands it to the guy. And I don't know how the boyfriend did not notice this. No, no, seriously. Michael Fassbender had a cup. He, no, I don't have a cup. You know what? I'll use this. Pretend this is the cup. He had this. He's like, here, drink this. Bloop. 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 Yeah. Would you drink that if someone did that to you? And you know what? I was like, you know what? Good. Boyfriend could fucking kill himself. And you know what? He drinks it. And then it's horny as hell. He has sex with Elizabeth. And it turns out that she can never have children. That's a very important point. She could never have kids. They have to hit you in the fucking head with it. So, uh, day comes. They're like, you know what? We have to go back to the cave and uh, rescue the two dumbasses. Oh yeah, they did not know that the, uh, the two uh, scientists were dead. They did not know that. Because uh, all of a sudden, I don't know, they lost footage for ever since the storm or something. I don't know. You know, whatever. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I skipped ahead a bunch. Uh, there's a very important plot uh, point. Charlize Theron, uh, she's the main leader who supplied the mission. And um, so, basically, her room is gigantic. Looks like an iPod. <laughs> has a piano. She has a bar. I mean, yeah, why not? She, and you know what? She's honestly one of the smartest people in the movie. I like that. And uh, she was mostly serious, but she had a funny side to her. I'll mention that in a bit. But uh, in her room, she has a surgical uh, machine that could do any surgical procedure. Remember uh, that uh, she has this because that's very important. You know, everything foreshadows. But uh, during the storm and the two scientists and everyone's having sex, he just Elba basically wants to bang Charlize Theron and she's like, okay, let's do it. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> he just Elba is the man, Charlize Theron is awesome. Why not? And I thought the both of them having sex would be a very important plot point either, but no, 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 it turns out it was something else. I'll say the joke later. But yeah, uh, day comes. The boyfriend is feeling very ill, of course. Um, there's this uh, scare uh, scene where he goes to the bathroom and it turns out that he has something in his eye and he's like, oh my god, what is that? And he, ha he has, he's all red eyed. He's feeling sick. But you know what? He didn't mention this to anyone. I mean, you're on an alien planet and you don't mention your sickness. He's like, oh no, I'm gonna write this off. Yeah. He's a dumbass. Oh yeah, before this, oh my god, I'm skipping so many scenes because I hate this movie. Um, when they landed on the alien planet, it turns out that inside the cave, uh, there's a certain section that they go in. And uh, apparently the air is breathable, according to their computer. So the boyfriend opened his helmet. But before this, the Elizabeth's like, wait, 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 you don't know what else is uh, in the air? And you know what he said? Oh, Elizabeth, don't be such a skeptic. Poop! A skeptic, really. You know, for scientists, they're really dumb because they don't take any precautions whatsoever. I mean, sure, they would say the air is breathable, but you're on an alien planet. There are some things that the computer probably doesn't know about. Oh my god. But it turns out the air is breathable anyway, but... It's stupid. Really, Scott is stupid. <laughs> Wait, no. Uh, is it really Scott who wrote it? No, no. Damon Lindenoff. Lindenoff. Uh, the lost guy. He's stupid! <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, they went to the cave, to, they found the biologist who's dead, they don't see any aliens in there, but they realize that the ooze uh, turned out to be a freaking ocean. So uh, then the boyfriend uh, start be starts becoming like an alien. He started to disintegrate and become feral and everything. But he's like, no, 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 I'm okay, I'm okay, leave me alone, blah, 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 blah. And... Then they finally go back on the ship, but Charlie Theron, the only smart one, is like, No, hell no, he ain't going to uh, get back on the ship. I have a flamethrower here. Get off! <laughs> Everyone else but him can go to the ship. And the boyfriend's like, oh. <laughs> And Elizabeth's like, Don't you have a heart? A heart, lady? Do you see your boyfriend? You want to get everyone contaminated? You stupid bitch! So, the boyfriend's like, you know what? Kill me! Because I know I have to die anyway. So, Charlie Theron burned his ass. The only, one of the rare smart people on the ship. Because the fact that she knows shit's gonna happen if he stays inside. He doesn't, she doesn't want to get contaminated, of course. I'm glad about that. So, Elizabeth, uh... Uh... Everyone has to do that, uh... You know procedure, you know, the test, just to see if uh, they're not infected. But it turned out that Elizabeth is three months pregnant, even though she just had sex. So, uh, yeah, it turns out that there's an alien baby cup going inside her. <laughs> and um, she escapes and uh, tries to do an abortion. So she had to go to uh, Charlie Theron's uh, surgical uh, suite. But when she uh, uh, puts in uh, what she uh, what kind of surgery she wants, uh, she's like, oh no, I want it around this area. You know, I need a cesarean. You know what the machine said? I'm sorry, 
this machine can only operate on male patients. Male patients. See, when I, in the theater, when I first heard this, not only did I think that it's the future and it's so dumb that a surgical suite that could do any surgery is only programmed for male patients, because female patients are much more harder to program, I don't know, but not just that, when the machine said this, I was like, is Charlize Theron a dude? That's what I thought at first, seriously. I was like, oh my god, this beautiful woman has a penis. But, you know, that can't be the case unless Idris Elba likes women slash men that way. Nothing against them, I guess. I don't know. That would have been an awesome twist. But no, 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 no. She's a woman. All female down there. So, I'll tell you why the, they have to write this stupid twist in that the surgical suite can only do on male patients. Anyway. So she's like, you know what, no, 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 I just need surgery here. So she got accepted, got in, but I don't know much about anatomy, but it cut her open with a laser. Really open. Used a giant tong. Goes inside of her. <laughs> takes out the alien squid baby. And then uh, closes her up by stapling her... Uh, Surgery. I'm like, I was dying of laughter in the theater at the time. I'm still dying of laughter when I saw it on the TV in my living room. I fell to the floor. It was ridiculous. And the squid baby was kind of cute, but here's the thing. How could it, the machine not know she's a woman? It should be smart enough to know that. But no, no, no. The thing is, is that she was not on any drugs. It didn't, the machine did not knock her out. She was still conscious at this point. I would have uh, blacked out from just a cut alone, but no, she's a trooper. And she got staples. Whew. And uh, she escaped and thought she killed the squid baby. But that's very important. The squid baby is in the surgical suite in Charlie Stone's room. Don't forget that. So after that, she walks around the ship and then uh, just happens to come inside uh, Waylon's room. Guy appears. Old Guy appears. Guy appears in very bad makeup. Turns out he's on the ship the entire time. So he's like the 18th member, I think. I don't know. So, yeah, the surgical suite was for him just in case if something goes wrong for him. Yeah, okay. That's a bad twist still, really. They had to write that down, really? It's stupid. Why couldn't it be smart? Anyway, he wants to meet the aliens, blah, blah, blah. Elizabeth's like, oh, no, 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 they're uh, going to try to kill us, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you don't want to see your creator, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, you know what, fine, I want to see my creator, blah, blah, blah. And Idris Elba, for some reason, knows that uh, this whole planet is uh, nothing but breeding because uh, all the, uh, the Black Ooze is like a... Uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction. I don't know how he fully knows that, but oh well, he's the usual show, but I'll take him. He's awesome. But uh, yeah, so Waylon, a couple scientists, and Elizabeth, and uh, David goes uh, to the cave again, and it turns out the cave is not just a cave, it's the ship. It's one of these ships. So, um, it's one of the ships that you see in the beginning of the movie. So, um, yeah, it turns out one of the space jockeys is still alive, the Kratos, and he was just hibernating. So they open it up and uh, they want to ask him questions. Uh, Waylon is like, uh, oh, uh, um, we want to know if you could uh, give us more life. And Elizabeth's like, uh, why did you try to kill us in the first place after you killed us? I mean, created us. <laughs> and uh, David is the translator. I don't know how he knows the language beats me but you know what David is the one of the uh, best uh, characters in the movie so I could I'll uh, deal with whatever he does unfortunately he gets his head snapped off he's a cyborg though so that shouldn't really affect him that much he's still alive so Idris Elba is like you know if you want to live then um, you know just go to a life pod 
and then I'll bring the lifeboat out. You know what? The fact that she didn't go to the lifeboat first, I don't know why. But she went to the life pod, she got suited up, and my god, she's still sexy as hell. It's Charlize Theron. My god, she's the most, one of the most beautiful women, beautiful actresses. So, um, yep, uh, she crash lands onto the planet. And uh, Idris Elba and the Asian guy and the uh, Spanish Italian guy, I don't know uh, what he is, they crash into the Kratos ship, and then the Kratos ship uh, comes down. But then we have one of the stupidest scenes ever. It crashes in front of Elizabeth and Charlie Theron, and then it turns out it's going to crash on top of them. But instead of them trying to run to the side, they decide to run where it's going to land on them. You know, here's uh, Elizabeth and Charlie Theron. They're trying to run away, and this ship is going to fall on top of them. It wasn't until Elizabeth uh trips over something and she decides to uh, roll on her side so Charlize Theron gets killed off. She was one of the smartest characters in the movie but my god they made her into a total dumbass. I don't know why they did that. So um yeah um Elizabeth uh, turns out to be the only survivor so she went back to the lifeboat and it turned out the baby became the alien baby inside the surgical suite it became huge. It's Cthulhu. It was huge. It's as big as a room. So, um, turns out that the Kratos thing wants revenge on Elizabeth. He doesn't want to go to another ship. He just wants to kill off. And David, uh, uh, you know, decapitated, uh, David, um, he warned her that uh, Kratos is going to come for her. And then Kratos did come for her. She opens the door and the giant alien baby, uh, decided it's a, basically a face hugger. It's a giant ass face hugger. And it kills off a Kratos and then fucks him in the mouth. So Elizabeth goes back to uh, Kratos' ship to get David. And then they, uh, it turns out David knows how to fly the ship. And he could teach uh, Elizabeth how to fly it. So David and Elizabeth went to another ship and uh, went to... Uh, there's going to be Prometheus too. And my god, the movie was freaking awful. It really is. It has the most beautiful visuals ever and one of the best 3D movies I've ever seen, but my god, I don't recommend it to anybody. I mean, I guess if you only turn off the sound, but... Oh god. The... Most of the acting is atrocious. The characters are hateable. Most of them, anyway. The only three people I liked is uh, David, Charlize Theron, and uh, Idris Elba. The only three. I can't say much about the Asian guy or the Italian-Spanish guy because they were barely in it. They don't have much of a personality, so I can't say if I hate them or like them. So, you know, yeah, Prometheus really sucked. It was a bummer. And um, I guess uh, they're trying to uh, do this whole thing on uh, alien life uh, over religion, but my god, it wasn't even interesting at all in the movie. They brought it up a bunch of times like, oh wait, uh, you just proved that aliens exist, uh, why do you believe in Christianity? She's like, well, you're just a robot. I'm like, really? You're a terrible scientist. You know what? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck everyone. I, I remember the first time I said I liked it, but I guess I just liked it because of the visuals. <laughs> the visuals... You don't need to see this. And I don't want a Prometheus 2 now. And this is from really Scott, the creator of Alien. How did he fuck his franchise up? Ugh. You know what? It's just gone. <laughs>